Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today I'm going to address a challenge that we have with any of the taller style printers, specifically the CR line of printers, and in my case, the Monoprice MP10, which is just a CR10 clone. And that is because it has this single gantry on most of these printers, you get a bit of wobble, you get a bit of vibration in your prints that leads to something called ghosting, where when you see a vertical line next to it, you may see some light images like it on your prints. I've attempted to solve that problem in a very simple way. I took and I bought a bunch of these anti-vibration pads that they make for washers and dryers. I put it under the printer, didn't make a difference. So I'm going to do something a little bit more radical, and that is Creality makes a CR10 kit that adds reinforcing beams between this corner and this corner to the printer. I'm going to assemble those onto this printer, and then we'll do some more test prints, and we'll see if that a bit additional rigidity stabilizes the printer so that I can print at 60 millimeters per second. At 40, I don't get ghosting, at 60, I do. Please stay tuned and let's learn something together. Well, I went off camera what I thought would be just a few moments to test fit a couple of the parts, and it's a good thing because on the CR10, the 80-20 extrusions are connected together with flanges like this, um, in pretty much all cases. On this printer, they use, they've drilled holes through the external extrusion into the internal extrusion and put in bolts. What that means is that the attachment mechanism for these braces, for the bottom location, will not work on the Monoprice MP10. And the reason is that they, the standard instructions are to tap this hole on the end of the extrusion and put a screw into it. But there are screws that go into the front that would block that screw. So I realized that as I began to test fit this, um, and I came up with a solution. Fortunately, I have 3D printers. So you can 3D print parts. This particular part is the second version. The first version was a little bit longer and configured slightly differently. And this version has been reinforced with a camphor or a triangle in the middle there to make it stronger. And basically I'm going to attach both the top using the mechanism that they provide, the bracket they provide, and the bottom using a similar bracket. Both of these are attached to the extrusion using um, special nuts that go, slot nuts that go into the slots and then rotate and hold the piece in place. However, I didn't have slot nuts for the bottom attachment, so I went to Thingiverse and I printed plastic slot nuts um, all of the printed parts that I'm using here are PETG, so they're a little bit stronger. Um, and when you print these slot nuts, you do need to drop a regular nut inside. Um, and I put a, just a small, tiny, tiny drop of super glue in there, of CA glue, and glue that in place because it makes it easier to work with these slot nuts. Okay. This side is fully assembled now. Let me assemble the other side because it's the same and you'll be able to see what the assembly process looks like. Uh, these threaded rods have a rounded end and a square end. You put the two-sided bolt into the square end. You screw it in about halfway. You then take the other one and you screw it together. These rods, by the way, feel great. They, uh, they must be a relatively heavy aluminum um, they're absolutely solid. Then you screw into each end of the rods a screw eye here. It's pretty easy to do. And the top one I know from experience is going to have to be screwed all the way in for our configuration. So we'll get that screwed all the way in. And the bottom one uh, will be in the middle of its range, but we'll adjust that uh, when we get the brackets in place. Okay, after that's assembled, 
we'll put that aside for a moment. We'll attach the top bracket. It comes with uh, two T-nuts. Move it over so it aligns with the edge here. Tighten it up, I need the right size screwdriver, right size Allen. Uh, they do provide you an Allen wrench. I prefer these, they're a little easier to use. A uh, set of four of these, I think it was $12 on Amazon. So that's now in place there. Now I'm going to put in place the bottom ones. Now we will take our homemade bracket. Um, these are M3 screws that I'm using for these. I'm using M3 because that's what I had and because uh, that's the T-nut size that was available. Um, on many of the other components that came from Creality, they're using M5s. Uh, I think the M3s will be just fine. There's really very little stress on this mechanism. Um, it's moving back and forth, but there's not a lot of weight on it. So I think that'll be just fine. I'm going to screw these into the plastic here to get them started. Uh, these are 12 millimeter long screws. Probably 10s would have been perfect. I don't have 10s, so I put a couple washers on them. So 12 is a standard size. M3 12s are a standard size. With a couple washers, that works fine. You potentially could remodel this part and make it a little bit thicker on the bottom, um, and that would also work. Since these T-nuts are made of plastic, you don't want to over-tighten. We're going to, now we're going to take an M5 and an M5 nut and use that to attach on the bottom. So I'm going to put the M5 in place here. I'm going to leave the nut off for right now. You can see this corner right here is the place that it was not fitting uh, originally. I have to screw this down so that this will align properly on the top. Here's an M5 that goes into a threaded tap hole here. We'll attach this. Well then, that's a little bit too tight there. Move that down a little bit. Move this up a little bit. So that it aligns perfectly. There we go. Put the nut on the back. And I'm going to come around to the side here so I can get the nut on properly. And now by unscrewing this or screwing this tighter, we can adjust this angle a little bit. Uh, we want to make sure this is square. Okay, that looks perfectly square there, which is interesting because this one is also square, but this is spaced out a little bit. I must have the nuts on the bottom in a slightly different position. So that looks good and square. That looks good and square. Make sure everything is tight and we are ready to go do a test print. Uh, this is rock solid now. Uh, it's not moving in this direction at all. It could move a little bit laterally, right to left, but we'll take a look when we do the print. Okay, it's been a very interesting two days. Let me recap for you what I've learned. Number one, ghosting is a difficult problem to correct. I see it on all my printers. I saw it more on the MP10. I believe it's because of the large print bed, which caused uh, more vibration as it went back and forth. Um, but uh, it is difficult to resolve. Putting just vibration dampers under the MP10 did not solve the problem. Adding the rods, it was very interesting. It got slightly better, but really not dramatically better. I was surprised. However, the printer just feels really solid. Uh, it's an upgrade I would do. It's very easy to do. It's relatively inexpensive. On the MP10, I did have to print some brackets. I'll put those on Thingiverse. Uh, other printers may be able to use those brackets also. But uh, that felt good, but didn't have as much of an impact as I wanted. However, when I reduced jerk to maximum jerk to 8 millimeters per second, it was set at 20 in my profile originally, the combination of all of these things, and I haven't unbundled them, stepped backwards, did produce a really nice print. It completely eliminated ghosting on the x-axis, 
So I'm still printing at 60 millimeters per second. I've reduced jerk down to eight. I have the anti-vibration pads. I don't know if those are helping or not. I have the rods. I believe those are making a somewhat of an improvement, but the combination of all these together produced a print that on the X axis is absolutely perfect. There's still a bit of ghosting on the Y axis, but it's really not very bad. So with those modifications, my MP10 printer, uh, which I just heard a number of people found that it was eligible for the 20% sale that Monoprice runs periodically. So they picked up an MP10 for $320 or so. That's a large format CR10 style printer uh, with a bunch of advanced features for $320. Uh, that makes it very cost effective. So with those things all together, it was a very interesting experiment. Bottom line is I'm going to continue to be chasing ghosts, but you can improve it. One thing I do believe would improve it, if you love, watch this little video, the table is still vibrating quite a bit. Now this exact same table that I use for my Ender 5 and my Prusa, but those are smaller format printers. Um, so putting this printer on the floor, I was tempted to put it on a pool table I have in the basement, which is rock solid, would probably completely eliminate the rest of the ghosting. Okay, folks, I hope this was useful to you, that you learned something, you found this interesting. The models I use, the brackets will be on Thingiverse. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in getting notifications as I produce new videos, give me a like. More importantly, comment. Share with me your experiences. Let's create a community here. Thanks, let's continue learning things together. <music>